My name is Cordelia McGee-Tubb, and I am a prototyper on the user experience team here at Salesforce.com. When I first joined the company as a software developer, I was working on a team with a bunch of other developers who had gotten bachelors of sciences in computer science or masters in computer science, and I was coming from a small, small liberal arts college with a bachelors of arts. And for a little while, I felt like that maybe put me at a disadvantage to other people because I hadn't come from this like rigorous engineering background. I felt like, oh, I'm not going to be as good as these people who came from top engineering schools, and I'm just not going to know as much as them, and it's going to be terrible and awful. And then I, I got here, and everyone was very supportive and, and helping me with code, and I never felt like I was an incompetent at all. Everyone was just like really like part of a team and I felt like just as much a part of the team as everyone else. I actually think it's helped me a lot because there are a lot of concepts that you don't really realize are connected. Like I took a lot of archaeology and a lot of the principles of archaeology you can apply to computer science because a lot of that, a lot of what you do as a developer is debug code, either your own code or other people's code or just you're just trying to figure out how a system works so that you can either fix the system or build off of it. And so, you know, archaeology is pretty much the same thing. You're analyzing all of this old stuff and figuring out how, like, how that all makes sense and what you can learn from it. Uh, so I actually think that my liberal arts background helped a lot with that, and I think that's also why I recently transitioned into the user experience department because I'm just really interested in connecting both sort of the humanities and the sciences and user experience is a lot about human computer interaction um, and so you really need to understand how people work not just how computers work but how they all work together. Coming into the user experience team as a prototyper I've kind of had the opposite feeling where suddenly I am one of very few technical people in a department full of designers so there's kind of the expectation that I know a lot about technology because I am one of the few developers on the team and that was a little hard to overcome too because I was like I don't know what I'm doing I, I kind of know how to develop but not really um, and I've been able to knock that down too and realize like yes I deserve to be here yes I am totally competent um, and I've been able to build some really cool things uh, it helps to have people kind of cheering you on along the way and being like, wow, you built that? I am a really indecisive person, but the great thing about being in computers is that computers are very, very decisive. So one kind of silly thing that I used a, a computer program for uh, a few years ago was that um, I had this boyfriend who, like, he and I would always hang out at one or the other person's apartment and be like, we want to watch a movie, but what do we want to watch? And we could never come to a conclusion. Uh, and he really likes spreadsheets. So one day he created this long spreadsheet of all the movies we wanted to watch. And we had this great spreadsheet, but I don't like reading spreadsheets and it wasn't helping me make any decisions. So what I did was um, I created a website. Uh, and the website pulled all the data from the spreadsheet and it had two large buttons. So you could say, I'm at Cordelia's house. You would click the Cordelia's House button and it would just show you the name of one of the movies in the spreadsheet um, and give you a little bit of information about it that it pulled from Wikipedia. It was a silly little project, but it was a fun way to kind of explore some new JavaScript things I hadn't used before to use the Google APIs because I was using Google Spreadsheets and just create something kind of fun that helped me make decisions. I was a kind of little creative, quiet little child, and I would always just draw little pictures for myself. So for a long time, I wanted to be a children's book illustrator. And then for a little while, I wanted to be an architect. And my parents gave me these like huge pieces of graph paper, and I would sit there and draw all of these buildings out. Um, and then in high school, I discovered web design. And I was like, that's kind of an interesting way to be technical in the same way that I was drawing all of these things out, but also visually creative. Um, so I think that that was actually a pretty natural transition. And now I make web comics, which are kind of like adult comic, <laughs> adult children's books. Um, 
and I write software every day, which is a little bit like being an architect. As an architect, you get to create a building that's aesthetically pleasing, but also you have to think logically about how do all the different components of it fit together? How does the plumbing work with where you want to put the bathrooms and where are the views going to be and how does everything kind of fit into one piece? And that's a really creative process and that's something that happens a lot in software development too because you have all these disparate little pieces and you have to be very creative about how they all fit together. I also just am very passionate about being creative in whatever way possible and I think like technology is really great for that because if you have an idea for something you can build there aren't limitations you can just go out and build it if you don't know how to build it you can ask other people to help you out one thing that's really interesting to me the longer that I'm in this particular industry is that I start seeing technology everywhere like you know you never really think about how public transportation works until you're looking at the, the sort of refill your muni card station and you're like, wow, this interface isn't so great. I wish that I could fix it. And then not only I wish that I could fix it, but here are all the different ways that I could go about fixing it. I've started looking at the world differently and kind of seeing everything as a problem that could be solved or an interface that could be improved. And you know, sometimes that's a little detrimental because I'll be like, why isn't my door working as like my door handle working as well as I'd like it to be? But sometimes it's really great because you can apply these sort of methodologies, like development methodologies to other areas of life. The Salesforce Foundation is a really cool nonprofit that's associated with Salesforce.com. And as a company, we've decided that we want to give 1% of our time, 1% of our equity, and 1% of our product to other people and other causes that we care about. So I've been working uh, as a computer tutor at a senior center uh, in Soma for about six or seven months now. And it's mostly senior citizens and people with disabilities who come into my computer lab um, and just ask me any questions they might have about computers, whether that's like, how do I access my email? Or how can I format this Microsoft Word document? Or sometimes it's like, how can I add this jQuery plugin to this website that I built? So there's a huge range of things that people are interested in that I can help them with. And it's really nice that Salesforce allows me to donate so much of my time, like I do this during the workday every week. One of the things that I'm really passionate about is digital literacy and making sure that people who don't have access to computers can get access to that and get training in that, which is one of the reasons why I volunteer every week helping senior citizens, since they're a population who people don't normally think about when you think about technology. People are always very focused on like young startups, but there are a lot of people out there who have kind of fallen behind just on this like constantly changing technology. So it's really important to make sure that they can um, have access to computers and have people around to help them like truly benefit from that. So I've helped people like look for job postings online, which is something that they may not have even thought to do online if they didn't have access to a computer. There are a lot of things that can be done. I think having public computer centers is really important uh, because a lot of people just don't have their own computers. One of the hardest thing that, things that the people who I work with struggle with is just filling out forms online. Mm -hmm. And most of the internet is filling out forms. Um, so just like making that easier for people and developing web standards would be pretty awesome because a lot of companies want to be really, really innovative and when they try to be really innovative, they introduce these new patterns that people need to learn. And especially when you're an older person or someone who doesn't use computers very regularly, it's really hard to pick up these new patterns. So kind of coming to consensus about that would be something really useful and just spreading knowledge, creating help documents, making sure websites are accessible for blind users. Like there are a lot of little things that can be done to make the internet and just technology in general a lot more accessible to a lot more people. It's something that we don't really think about because we're young people in technology and a lot of companies right now are, are solving problems for young people or solving problems for people like themselves. 
But eventually we're going to be old, and eventually, even though we don't want to admit it, there are going to be technologies that we don't understand. Um, and, you know, it would be great to kind of pave the way for that and, and always be thinking about people who may not be as with it as you are, I guess, because we're eventually going to be like that too. <laughs>